And if I did that dumb thing where a video started with a random clip, it'd be like, look at my cool SUV. Do you think it can do this massive loop-de-loop? -loop? Find out in this video. Hey, this is YBR with BeamNG Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a map called Deathfall. And this is a map I made a video for in the past, but it's been updated a lot since then, so I decided it was time for a new video. Now, right off the bat, there is one thing I gotta mention. By default, it's at this time of day where there's really big shadows, and sometimes the shadows make things dark to see on video. So I'm gonna change the time of day to be 0.00, .00 which makes the sun directly above our head, so it makes the shadows a little less in the way. So this is an example of a death fall. Straight off the bat, we drive two feet forward, and then we crush the truck. It's not going to drive at all, but there's a lot more falling that we could have done. We just need a faster vehicle, so I'm going to back up the truck a bit, and then we're going to replace it with the drag version of the Bruckle Moonhawk. This is the perfect vehicle for this, as long as we can keep it straight, which I mostly have, so we're going 100 miles per hour off of that thing, and we got some really nice flight here, which should allow us to get much more damage than you saw on the pickup truck. So much, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and use a hundred times slow-mo here so we can really admire just how flattened the vehicle becomes so there's initial impact. Obviously it's not going to drive after something like that. The engine is now touching the rear axles and not the way it's supposed to. Alright, can we go ahead and speed this up just a little bit? Yeah, nothing else is really happening. Camera's going to spin around for some reason. Camera never knows what to do when you have an impact that big. Anything below 100 miles per hour, that's fine, but that was well over 100 miles per hour when we hit the ground. And looking at the vehicle, I can barely tell which is the front and which is the rear, which is the top and which is the bottom. It got completely wrecked, but it held some of the shape thanks to the roll cage, surprisingly. Either way, though, that is crazy amounts of damage, so we're going to bring it back up. And this time, we're going to do something that won't cause as much damage, but it also gets to use the over 1,000 horsepower that this vehicle has. So we're going nice and easy, and then we floor it to fly as fast as we possibly can. And we were going like 100 miles per hour once again. Got some good flight, and then big impact. And now, the only question left is, are we going to land on our wheels? Yes, we will. And we have come to a stop. But this time, at least, the vehicle is much, much more identifiable, even if it's equally as broken and can no longer drive. So I bring it back up, and then let's swap vehicles out. We don't need something this fast for the next thing, so let's just grab a 200BX, because for the next things, all we need to do is drive forward a little bit, and then into a hole. It's that simple. And we gotta wait for a while, because we got to get to the bottom of the hole, which is gonna take a second. But once we get to the bottom, there will be destruction. We have all of these skewers here, and it's gonna totally skewer my car. It looks like we should be hit by them, but I gotta make sure I get a good camera angle, because this will freak out if we use the automatic camera, I'm pretty sure. So that looks pretty good. We could watch the skewering right in the middle, straight through the car. That was beautiful. It took the doors off. Even got the fender somehow on the left side, and then it's going to go to the ground for the final big impact. And obviously, after something like that, there's no chance it's going to be able to drive. So bring it back up, and hey, guess what? There are actually four tubes up here, so let's go ahead and take a look at another one. In this one, we have canisters all over the place. And I always try my best to try to get to the middle of this, but no matter what, it seems like it always pushes you off to the edge like so. But either way, let's go ahead and enjoy the car falling to the very bottom and ooh, that was violent the camera was whipping around couldn't even really tell what was going on so we got some big damage and we still got a lot of tube left so keep on going car gaining speed is it gonna hit anymore yes it will there's a big hit and at this point in time honestly i don't even know if you could tell what this car once was it has really been completely destroyed and oh yeah we still got way more to do because we gotta get to the very very bottom at this point, this car is just completely ruined. I wouldn't even know that this was a car. It looks like a mangled mess of polygons. Stop right in the sun so I can take a really good look at you. There you go. Now stop. It's not going to stop, is it? Is it? Is it? Come on, just stop. Stop in the sun. Okay, we're just going to freeze physics because I don't want you to be rolling away like a pain in the butt. Apparently, that was a car at one time. Sure, why not? That's the engine. There's everything else that was once a car. Don't know what it is. So we'll bring it back up, and then we got a couple more tubes we can do. So this time, let's go with an ETK 800. And we're going to go over to the tube on our right side. And that's directly to our right. And here we have a lot of tubes going across the way. Kind of similar to the canister one, but they're a lot thinner. So you crash into them a little bit differently. And we are getting speed now. Ooh, that was interesting. 
We really wrapped ourselves around that one. Wow, okay, that's a great crash. We can't do much better than that because that was cool. So let's go ahead and go to the next tube over to our left this time. And on this one, we have a bunch of cubes all over the place. And again, we might get stuck on these or we might bounce off of them. In that case, we have bounced off of the first few. Can I drive off of this one? Yes-ish? Come on, yeah. I only had front wheel drive there, so I was really lucky I was actually able to get off all the way. I almost got stuck, but just barely made it, and we are going to make it all the way to the bottom. And once again, there will be massive destruction at that point, but I feel like we should take a look at the vehicle before that. So this is what it looks like right now. At this point in time, you can still tell what it was. This was a car. You can even tell, maybe if you know your car as well, there was an ETK 800. Now... I don't know if you could tell that was once a car. It just kind of looks like a fiery mess at this point in time. And there's really not much to look at after an impact like that. You know, when you're going through the tube, you got stuff to look at. But after something like that, it's just these are mangled. I have no idea what's what anymore. And as you saw, I did change cars. I don't even know what I was clicking. I just clicked and then, hey, we're in a blue buck. Because again, it doesn't matter what car we have because that's all we need to do for driving. Any vehicle could easily do that. So down at the bottom of this one, we have a bunch of trees. So what exactly will happen when we hit the trees? Well, here's a little bit of slow-mo, so we can find out. We're going to do 16 times slow-mo, and then whoop, it goes through the trees. Can't really see what's happening, and then boom, there goes the impact to the ground. So what the trees do is they just slow it down a bit, but in the end, we're still going super fast, and we're going to wreck the car, but we can't really see what happened because there's trees in the way. Here's a good angle. It almost looks like a truck for some reason. I don't know why, but it almost looks like a D-Series. Maybe it's that blue color being shadowed like that. It makes it look like the default color on a D-Series. So anyways, over here we have another tube, we're going to hop right into this one, backing it up, and then we're going to be done with the blue buck. I like that. Two crashes, and then it's time for a new vehicle. It's dark in here. Headlights on. This is not going to help at all because there. That is what it was trying to do. It crushed us in between two different walls, and well, the car is really thin now. Really, really thin. Oh, and it's on fire as well. So bring it back up, and the next car. What car is the next car? I don't know. How about a Miramar? Doesn't really matter. We gotta back this one up a little bit more because we're gonna go past these two blocks. And these are the next two we're gonna hit. So we'll save the spot right there. And let's go to the right first. And on this one, it's pretty similar to the one we just did where we have two edges that are gonna crush us. This one is just in the middle though. So if you line it up perfectly, maybe you'll make it through the hole. I didn't quite line it up perfectly. I was close, but not quite. Either way, we got lots of damage to the car. But it did land in a really awkward angle, so it's hard to truly see the vehicle after something like that. So now we go to the next one over here to our left. And this one, we just have a big, fat bucket of water. Well, it's not really a bucket now, is it, if a whole car can fit into it? But you know what I mean. We got water. We're going to land in the water, and we're going to see what it does to the car. And it did quite a bit of damage. Engine and drive shaft are broken. And you can see the engine's like outside of the vehicle. Oh, look at this thing. It looks like a transformer about to transform. Right there, that's a transformer about to transform. You can look at the rest of the vehicle, and then just look at it transforming. That's exactly what it looks like to me. Ha! And that's two crashes, so it's time for another car change. Let's go with the Legrand, but I like my Legrands nice and fast, so we're gonna grab the Custom. So directly behind us, we have a very, very uncomfortable slide. And if you do it right, you can get to the bottom, basically, and if you do it wrong, well, you're going to get caught on a lip and completely wreck your vehicle. So to do it right, what you got to do is you got to be nice and careful on the entry. And then you got to go on the smooth transition point from container to container. So you see how it's a little smooth right there. You want to do that as much as you possibly can as you go down the slide. The one problem is it gets steeper and steeper and eventually you start to lose traction. And you get in a situation like this where you're just holding on for your life, trying to get to the bottom. And we have basically made it to the end and that just completely ruins the vehicle it's completely flat nothing really to look at so we're just going to go ahead and reset it and then we're going to go and take a look at the tube over to our right so yes there is another tube and this one's a little bit different though it's a single tube and then it splits off into two separate tubes so you get to see which one do you get to land into that actually broke the engine that small impact at least i thought it was a small impact was enough to destroy the vehicle and it still has to fall all the way to the bottom here to get the real impact so there's the real impact and then here's the finisher was this a vehicle one time sure if you say so because i look at that and i don't even know what i'm looking at to be honest with you it's just a mess 
So there's a look at the mess before we go ahead and reset it. And again, that's two impacts. So now we're going to switch vehicles. We're going to go with a nice fast hill climb version of the Pessima. And can we go over this lip? Oh, yes, we can. I believe in you, Pessima power. So we got two ramps over here. We're going to go ahead and do both of them. So we'll save this. This is a nice little spot. And first ramp, we have a bunch of blocks on it. And trying to drive down this is just going to give you pain and misery. You can try all you want to dodge them, but you're not going to dodge them all. There's no way to dodge them all. You're going to hit one. Maybe you can get a monster truck and drive over them. But either way, that did some big damage to the Pessima. And we can look at the damage while we fly through the air. And you can see it's still very identifiable as a car with some front-end damage. After this impact, though, is it still identifiable as a car with some front-end damage? Yes and no. At least this time, it kind of looks like a car thanks to the power of the roll cage. And the engine is even still in the engine bay, which is actually surprising, considering usually the engine flies way out of the vehicle when I do things like this. So we have another ramp that looks very similar to the one we just went down over here. But on this one, we have ramps on the ramps. Yes, it's ramps all the way down. We're going to try to get the biggest one we can. It's going 150-ish miles per hour, and that was beautiful. That is basically the perfect angle for flight. Unfortunately, the landing, not going to be as beautiful. Landing is going to be really violent and fast. Again, the roll cage strong. Roll cage makes it where you could tell that this was a car still. And again, the engine is in the engine bay. Wow. Pessima, you are surprisingly durable. I wish I could drive you more, but the rules clearly state two things and you're up. But we can go to your cousin, the other Pessima, who's not nearly as cool because he has a roll cage and he's just a basic economy car. But anyways, directly behind us, we have a hole with a bunch of blocks floating in it, and we're going to crash into them. Like so. That was a beautiful crash, and now we're going to go to the very bottom. Oh, one actually unexpected hit coming in there, and now we go to the bottom. This car is already mangled. It does not need to fall to the bottom to become unrecognizable. It's already unrecognizable, and now it's just even worse. Hey, the engine sort of fell out. It's there, but just ever so slightly. There's a look at the damage in the shadows, of course. It can make it harder to see, but it doesn't really matter because there's nothing to look at after something like that. It's just mangled. Over to our right, we have another hole. This one has rocks in it that defy gravity. They float in the air all menacing-like, and then they will shred your Ibishu Pessima or whatever car you're driving. In this case, yeah, it's an Ibishu Pessima. And then we're going to let it fall all the way to the bottom because under this situation, it's mostly intact compared to everything else we've seen. It looks great. I could even tell you, yes, that was an Ibishu Pessima. And now, will I be able to tell you that anymore? Probably not. Again, just mangling them every time when it gets to the very bottom. So flat, so smushed. Back to the top, new vehicle. This time, let's go with a Grand Marshal. And we've done all of the jumps and bumps around here, so now we need to go to the next zone. And going to the next zone is a little bit unusual. Because what you gotta do is you gotta go across this corner that's barely touching what we're actually on. So right here, this is the place you drive across. It's not that hard, but it doesn't look like it's something you're actually supposed to drive across. So we're gonna save this spot, and then we can drive down the things here. So first, on our far left, we have another area with a bunch of containers on some stairs. That is great for chucking your car off of, like so. Going about 70 miles per hour, got some really good air going, so we should really be able to bounce off of these pretty well. So big impact, and keep going, keep going, don't stop, we got that spin going. Although we have lost a lot of speed already, surprisingly, and we are not going to go much farther than that. In fact, that's it. We are stopped. And at least we didn't have to fall all the way to the bottom, so now we can look at the car and you say, yeah, that actually kind of does look like a car. At least on that side. This side, well, you can still see the door's distinct outline, so it looked like a car. Over to the next ramp over on our right. Hopefully we can hit it because I can't actually see it from this angle. I just know it's somewhere in this direction. So everybody cross your fingers and hope I can find it right. It should be like right around here. Is this correct? Yes. So this is just a really, really bumpy ramp. That is great for doing this. You get your car going down it and then it'll spiral out of control. Sure, you could try to drive over that, but this is much more fun. Oh, look at that transition. Such a clean transition from one to the other. Are we going to fall off of the edge of this one? Nope. We are going to stop right here. Again, we are upside down though. So let's get this guy right side up and take a look at the damage. And once again, it actually looks like a car. It doesn't just look like a mangled mess. I like that. Back up to the top. That's two. Who's next? How about you, Ibishu Kovet? So we have another stairway that's even worse than the one we just drove down. 
Seriously, this map could just be called the world's worst stairways because all these stairways suck unless you're trying to destroy a car, in which case, yeah, they work pretty good on that. So we got one over here that's the same as the one we just did, but bigger. Everything here is massive. Look how big these things are. Big, and they will bounce you around just as good as the other ones. Actually, I think the other ones bounce you around better. And, ooh, we're okay. I don't know exactly how. Looks like my wheel got stuck inside of the wall a little bit, but I'll take it. That's a very, very safe way of doing things, but not a very destructive way, is it? Y'all want destructive ways, don't you? Well, too bad, because apparently that's really grabby, so we're not going to try that one. You know what? That doesn't even count for the two for the COVID. The COVID still has two tries left on different things, because that one just didn't seem to want to work right. So the other things I'm going to do are a little bit of a drive away. Not as unusual of a drive as the last ones, though, because we stay on a solid surface the whole way. We don't have to do any sort of sketchy corner hopping or anything like that. Instead, we can just drive around the corner like a perfectly ordinary person would do. Oh, who am I kidding? An ordinary person would not be up here at all. This is very abnormal. Over here, though, we have some more ramps. And these ones have ramps at the bottom of ramps. It's ramps all the way down, guys. And just entering this ramp could be a little sketchy, but that was all right. So keep going. And we got a bunch of different ramps down here. What's the point of the smaller ones, though, when you have the biggest option right here? Big ramp. Here we go. My hubcaps have all popped off. We hit that ramp so hard. That's beautiful, though. Watch all those hubcaps fly off in every which direction. And then we let it fall all the way to the ground. So it's a little bit of a weight. And then, boom. No roll cage to reinforce it, so we got a ton of damage on it. And it's rolling down this hill really fast. It doesn't look like a car. It looks like a pickup truck. And that's the second time I've said that. When you flatten a vehicle this much, I guess they just kind of turn into pickup trucks. Because it literally looks like it has a bed of a truck on the rear of it. Except it won't stop sliding all over the place. Where are you trying to go? Are you trying to go to the water because you're on fire? Too bad. If you get that far, I'm just going to reset you out of spite. Like, you really are going to get that far, huh? <laughs> Sucks to be you, buddy, because you ain't getting wet. And I don't think we need to do every single ramp here because all these just end in ramps of different sizes, so the outcome's going to be pretty similar. But one of them is very, very different. This one has a loop-de-loop -loop on it. That is definitely one we got to try out and see what happens. So we're going to go on pretty fast with this COVID. We're going to see, can it do the loop? And we got to use this camera angle so we can actually see what's happening because if you try to use the other one in a loop, it goes terribly. But this has worked perfectly. That really was perfect. There's absolutely no damage whatsoever to the COVID. So we got to wait for the big fall to take it out. Ooh, are we going to hit that box at the edge? Not quite. We're about 20 feet off of that. So instead, we're going to go to the ground and go big splat, car destroyed. Oh, no, it got its way to the water. I could not react fast enough. Fine, you made it into the water. You happy now? Good, because we're done with you. You're being replaced. New car time. A new car is Hirochi Sunburst, but really fast Hirochi Sunburst. And then we're going to take a look at probably my favorite area at this entire map. And it's just this little itty tiny hole over here. Very, very basic looking, but inside of this, it's a cave-like structure so it really bounces your car all over the place. The only problem is, is when you're bouncing all over the place like this and everything kind of looks the same, you get dizzy. I will fully admit, I get dizzy and I have trouble figuring out which way is up and which way is down. But I love the way it just keeps bumping the vehicle over and over again so it gets a little more damaged each and every time until before you know it, it's really, really wrecked up. That to me is the favorite kind of crash I have. And it's still going as you see. We are not quite at the end yet. Even though this car has been really completely ruined, we just keep bouncing around. Now we can finally see the exit, so we are almost there. And after all that bouncing, we still have a long way to go until we get to the actual bottom. What a beautiful situation that was. Hey, I just made that thing into a Christmas tree. Look at my amazing car ornament. Anyways, we're going to go back up to the top, and directly behind us is the big tube of doom. And one thing that's neat about this tube is you can actually drive on the edge of the tube for a while. Eventually, gravity's going to take over and say, hey, you can't be trying to climb that. I'm too strong, so go back down to the center, which is like right about now. So I say, okay, let's try to straighten out, and we'll go fast, and then maybe we'll try going to the left or something. Just give a little bit of variety into the way this thing crashes, going as 
hard to the left as we possibly can. Hopefully we won't get too badly damaged. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, that second impact really got it. I was going to say, oh, it's not that badly damaged. Then the second impact just came and said, nah, it is badly damaged. Even with the roll cage, it's got some serious damage going on. On this side, it's a little bit better, but still a lot of damage there. And again, two crashes on to the next car. This time we're going to go with an SBR4 and we'll get the all-wheel drive twin turbo S. Did I even need to go in there to pick a faster one? No, we're not driving that far. Sure, we're driving a little bit of distance, but it's not like this rally sunburst where we actually could drive down something. We're just driving to here, that's it. So we saved the spot and then we're gonna go in the tube directly to our right. So on this one, we have a couple of angles that change up. So first we have an angle that pushes us to the left. At least I assume that would be the left. Then we're gonna get one that pushes us to the right. Every hit, the camera just flips. Look at this, whoop. Every time, whoop, camera flips. That one's a light hit, so it flips slow. I don't know why, but something about that spot really makes it flip around for some reason. Anyways, after all that, well, we have uh, that to look at. Yeah, I, there's nothing I can say about that. And apparently, it's still going down this hill at some speed. It was. No, it's not. It's done. All right, back up to the top, and we're going to make our way to the next tube. So this one, it's two wedges that will smush your car side to side or top to bottom. It depends how you enter it. So we're gonna save this spot because it's a little bit of a drive to get here. And then we just drive right off the edge like so and that's all we need to do. We don't need to do anything else. We just watch and there's gonna be one big impact that goes squish. Beautiful wedgification of my car, which was already a little bit of a wedge-like shape. So again, that's two crashes. That car's done, now for a pickle. And I mean that literally because we're going to be driving the Autobello Pickle. So we only have two more things in this area. First, we have another big ramp with a jump on it. And there are actually, again, multiple ramps with different jump sizes. But there's really no point in showing them all off because in the end, you always land on the ground way, way down below, which just completely wrecks the vehicle no matter what. You're not going to go and be, oh, yeah, my car is perfectly intact because I took the other ramp. No, you're going to get wrecked no matter what you do. Here we go, nice little flight, going about 70 miles per hour at the end of the jump, and now we just let it fall, and it's going to take a while because we are way up in the air, so this is going to be another huge impact in three, two, one, boom! Yep, that's exactly what I expected about, just complete annihilation, and there's my engine! He's trying to get back into the car, he's like, don't leave me behind, I'm just already left him behind, sorry engine, you're not needed for me anymore. So now we're going to go to another tube, and this is honestly the worst tube in the whole map. There's always got to be a worst if there's a best. The best was the cave, this one's the worst because it's an empty tube that just makes you crash into the very bottom and then your car gets completely wrecked. Watch, I'm going to say that, and then somehow it's going to have a really cool crash and I'm going to be like eating crow, right? So, boom! You know what? That looks really interesting. Out of all of the crashes, when we've jumped off the edge, it's always, oh, that's boring. This one actually looks like you took one of the cars and you cut it in half because it landed so thinly. Literally, look, it looks like half of a vehicle. Finally, it came to a stop. That is actually really interesting. So that's going to do it for the upper levels. Now we're going to go to the lower levels, and it is a bit of a drive to get there. So we're going to go with a nice, fast Burnside Special, and this should make it a lot easier to get to the top, because if we were trying to drive the pickle up to the top, I don't think it would even have made it up there. It doesn't have enough power. You need something with a decent amount of power, but in reality, you want something with a ton of power because it's a really long road to drive up. Just getting to that road is going to take a second at least. Thankfully, the Burnside Special is fast. It's going almost 100 miles per hour before you have to slam on the brakes a little bit. Going around the corners nice and easy. And then straight up and to the right, and there is the big ramp. So we're going to go nice and easy around this corner, breaking way too hard there. So here's the big ramp to go up to the second story. And this is why you want a lot of power. It is steep and it is long. So this is the perfect car to go up this ramp. And we are going to go probably close to 100 miles per hour at least. And since I have nothing else to talk about now, I should mention I'm kind of recording this video and I'm feeling a bit sick. So I apologize if you could see it in my uh, voice. But... There's really nothing much I can do about that. I just got to do the best I can to hide it. But I admitted it now, so now you guys all know why. Anyways, we are now at the top. And what? Rear drive shaft broken. 
I barely scraped it. Oh, but look at this. Look at how perfectly I stopped right before the edge. I just had one more car length left before I was a goner. So now we're going to do the thing over to our left, which is similar to the canisters we saw at the start. They were ginormous, and they just get a little steep for each one. But these get too steep way faster. So like this is the last one you can practically drive on. And this next one, how are you going to drive on that? There's no way. And also, I don't know why there are these giant pillars going up to them, but there is. No idea what those are for. So now we're going to have probably the biggest single impact in the whole video right here. So don't blink, because there it was and there it went. Yep, that's flat. Just as you'd expect. So now we're going to go over to the right side. And the right side is just a bunch of ramps, basically. So there's not too much we actually need to do here. I'll do the favorite of the ramps, which is this one right here. Because on this one, if we do it just right, we can have it where we land right on the edge of one of the boxes that you could dive into. So let's see if I did this right. And I'm talking about just this vehicle. If you have a different vehicle, maybe you'll land inside of it. If you're a pro, you'll land in the little hole for the cave. Good luck with that. Although this is pretty close. Come on. Yes. See, I knew that was going to happen, though, because I already did a run with this car in this particular location. So I knew if I went full speed, we'd be able to get right about there. Again, mangled car, though, so we bring it back up, and that is two runs. So we're going to need to go to a different car for the final thing we're going to do, which is a really big loop-de-loop. -loop. So for that, let's go with, I don't think we've used the roamer yet, so we'll get the street tuned roamer because we do need some speed here. And if I did that dumb thing where a video started with a random clip, it'd be like, look at my cool SUV. Do you think it can do this massive loop-de-loop? -loop? Find out in this video. Well, let's see if we can actually do it. Start nice and easy. And then fast, fast, fast. Gas, gas, gas. 40 miles per hour. Upshift. 70, 80. This thing is accelerating decently well. Whenever you invert the car, this camera angle makes it a heck of a lot easier. Come on, you got this. Ooh. Uh-oh, uh-oh, catch me, catch me. Yes, that is a successful loop as far as I'm concerned. So that's going to do it for this video. Until next time, this has been YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by how destroyed the cars get. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time. Also, that's why we don't use that camera angle, because you don't even get to see the impact at the bottom most of the time. It's cool while it's flying, but not being able to see the impact kind of sucks.